Hello, this is Arthur Hill with StockCharts.com. You are tuned into a video edition of The Mailbag, and today we're going to look at the difference between Keltner channels and moving average envelopes. All right, I'm going to show you first the moving average envelopes, and I'm going to talk about the one similarity between Keltner channels and moving average envelopes. Actually, you know, there's one similarity as far as the calculation is concerned, and there are other similarities into how they look and how they work as far as analysis. But the main thing is, is they're both based on a 20 period moving average. Now with moving average envelopes, you can choose between an exponential or simple moving average. With Keltner channels, you have an exponential moving average. So what I'm doing is I'm showing moving average envelopes using a 20 period exponential moving average. Now typically with moving average envelopes, you don't have the moving average in the middle. You just shown the thick blue envelopes above and below that moving average. And I just put that moving average in the middle for reference. And moving average envelopes, what they do is they put a upper band, if you will, and a lower band, if you will, that is 2.5% above and below that 20 period exponential moving average. So as that moving average declines, then so does that envelope. And you can see when you get a move to the upper part or just above that envelope, that may be cause for short-term overbought conditions, but you can see that you can move above that envelope and continue higher and, be, and remain overbought as you did in July here. And sometimes you move sideways and pull back to the lower envelope. All right, now let's look at Keltner channels. All right, so here are Keltner channels. And again, I'm using IWM, the Russell 2000 small cap iShares. And the middle line, of course, is the 20 period exponential moving average. This is exactly the same on both charts. Now here's the big difference. Keltner channels are based on the average true range, and I'm showing that in the indicator window. So here we have Keltner channels 20, which is a 20 period EMA, and then you see the 10 up in the upper left hand corner. That stands for the number of periods for the average true range. And then you see 2, and that's the number of average true range values that we're going to use. So going back to the indicator at the bottom, you can see the average true range fluctuates as the volatility fluctuates in the Russell 2000 ETF. So here it was relatively high, around 1.6 in June, and now it's around 1.2 here in January. So it's a little bit lower. So that causes the bands to be a little bit more contracted or narrow. Now, as you can see, the upper band is two ATR values above the 20 period EMA, and the lower band is two ATR values below. And I would say that this is a little bit more dynamic than the moving average envelope, because the average true range being a volatility indicator is a little more dynamic. And the way I would use this is, I would say the more times you're touching the upper band, that's more indicative of an uptrend. OK, and then you get pullbacks and you hold the lower band, you see, and then every advance you exceed the upper band and that shows strong buying pressure. So keep these in mind uh, when you're doing your chart analysis. If you want to, say, channel a trend and look for pullbacks, maybe to that lower boundary as potential buying opportunities or areas to enter an uptrend. All right, that concludes today's mailbag video. Thanks very much for tuning in and have a great day.